you may be one of the millions of people suffering from diabetes, but did you know that diabetes can actually affect your GI tract as well? In this video today, we'll discuss exactly what diabetes is, the different types. Then we'll talk about exactly how diabetes affects every aspect in your gut. And at the very end of the video, I'll give you my tips on how you can control your diabetes and your gut. So you're not suffering from two different conditions. Guys, let's talk about food. Howdy y'all, Dr. Islam here, AKA your poop guru and gut microbiome expert. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. Come see us at Gastro for all your GI needs. Now don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Diabetes is a complication we're seeing as a consequence of our diet. When we're eating such a crappy diet full of carbs, sugars, and starches, it affects your gut, it affects your body, and one of the consequences of that is diabetes. Now in general, what diabetes is, is that it is a condition that actually affects your pancreas and the production of insulin. Insulin is a necessary hormone to actually metabolize sugar so you're not full of sugar on your body, which can lead to long-term complications. What happens when you have diabetes is that your insulin production or sensitivity is impaired, meaning you're not able to metabolize that sugar and fat as effectively, leading to a host of problems and complications. Now, there are three main types of diabetes you should be aware of. First one is type one, which is typically an autoimmune disease. This is not as common as type two diabetes, but it's something we should talk about. So type one diabetes is actually an autoimmune disease in which your body actually attacks the pancreas. And by doing that, it destroys the cells that produce insulin. This means in essence, your body cannot produce insulin, which is a hormone that's necessary to regulate blood sugars. So usually we find diabetes type one in those individuals who are very, very young and also very, very skinny. Because this is an autoimmune disease, we can find this early and treat by giving you insulin. Now what's interesting specifically about type one diabetes is because it's an autoimmune disease, you actually may have other autoimmune diseases associated with this, including things like celiac disease or autoimmune diseases against the thyroid. So usually we can see a cluster of other autoimmune diseases in those individuals who have type one diabetes. Now let's talk about type two diabetes, the more common diabetes that we find in the United States. So type two diabetes is directly a consequence of being fat. Absolutely it is, I'm sorry, but that is pretty much the black and white answer. The more obese you are, the more you're eating really bad food, having really bad carbohydrates and sugar, the more it's going to affect your pancreas to lead to type two diabetes. Now in type two diabetes, the concept is the same. As you get bigger, as you get more obese, as you have more inflammation going on in the body, that can also destroy the cells in the pancreas to destroy insulin. Now your body can still produce insulin, but it's not as effective and not as sensitive. And the consequence is the exact same as it is for type one diabetes. You have all that sugar running around your body with nowhere else to go, producing fat, more obesity, and more complications. Now, the third type of diabetes is gestational diabetes, which in essence is diabetes you get whenever you're pregnant. Now, during this type of diabetes, your body cannot produce enough insulin to meet the demands of both the baby and the mother. Once again, it's not as common as type two diabetes, and it's limited to those who are pregnant, but the effect is the same. So how exactly does diabetes affect your gut? It pretty much affects every portion, every organ of your GI tract. We know from my patients that uncontrolled diabetes, it can affect the stomach directly, leading to a condition called gastroparesis. Now gastroparesis is delayed gastric emptying, meaning your stomach doesn't want to contract or move as effectively as people who don't have gastroparesis. So food just sits there in your stomach and it sits there and it sits there and it sits there and it just ferments and just sits there all the time. It's like having stagnant water outside that just gets full of bugs and bacteria and all sorts of junk in there. It's the exact same concept with diabetes. When diabetes affects your stomach causing gastroparesis, your stomach doesn't want to move. Nothing wants to contract. And as food sits there, you get symptoms of worsening reflux nausea, pain, indigestion, you don't feel very good. And typically this occurs after you eat. And a lot of my patients who have gastroparesis suffer from a lot of different symptoms, including the ones I mentioned from above. But as you go down the GI tract, gastroparesis can also affect your small intestine as well. Your small intestine is an organ that's mainly used to help absorb nutrients. And as diabetes affects the small intestine, you get worsening absorption of nutrients, leading to a lot of other symptoms as well. In fact, a lot of my patients who have really bad diabetes, they have problems with absorption and metabolism of vitamins and nutrients. And these can lead to other conditions like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO, which is a predominant bad bacteria in your small intestine. And speaking of your gut microbiome, diabetes also affects 
the change in your gut microbiome. In our GI tract, in our gut microbiome, there's thousands, billions, trillions of bacteria, viruses, and fungi that are constantly battling for supremacy in your GI tract. What happens is when your diabetes is uncontrolled, when you have all this sugar in your small intestine, in your gut, the bad bacteria are, yes, they're so happy! They proliferate, they do their damage, and they destroy the good bacteria in your small intestine. And this imbalance is one of the markers of really bad GI health and can lead to many different symptoms from that. So this video is probably sponsored by Love a Gastro. Yes, that is my clinic. If you're suffering from GI issues, if you have anything going on inside your gut, our clinic is the clinic to take care of you. We try to do a more natural approach to help out with your GI issues and all your gut issues as well. So if you're looking for gastro help or even liver help, come see us at Gastro where we can take care of all your GI and liver needs. Next, diabetes can also affect the lining of your GI tract. It can cause low lying inflammation and irritation inside your gut. And this can manifest in many different symptoms, including condition you may have heard about, including leaky gut. And then lastly, diabetes can also affect your colon. A lot of my patients with diabetes have issues with constipation or a change in their bowel habits. They may be regular one day, then all of a sudden, when their diabetes is acting up, they can have diarrhea, constipation, or a little bit of both at the same time. That dysregulation of your gut can lead to so many different symptoms that are lower down the GI tract. And this is why a lot of my patients suffer from a condition called IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. So now that we talked about exactly how diabetes affects your gut, what can we do to get this taken care of? Here are my recommendations. So number one, contrary to what pretty much all my other videos say, for those who have diabetes and it's affecting your gut, you need to have a low fiber diet. Yes, I know, oh, I know. This is one of the few exceptions in which we recommend low fiber. Here's why. Fiber tends to sit inside your gut because of how plentiful, but also how long it takes to digest that fiber. As food sits on your stomach or your small intestine and you have worsening diabetes, it adds almost like a double whammy into your GI tract by causing your stomach to slow down even more than what it should be. So for a lot of my patients who have diabetes or gastroparesis, I tell them to be on a low sugar, low fiber diet. Number two is to have small frequent meals throughout the day. Don't be eating three large meals, have five to seven small meals all throughout the day, almost as if you're grazing like grass, like an animal. I know it's weird, but it actually does work. Number three, try to eliminate any extra sugar that you're ingesting in your diet. Your body already is full of sugar, and inflammation because of your diabetes. Don't add gasoline to that fire by having more sugar on top of that. Minimize sugar, eliminate sugar, so you're not adding more fuel to the fire. Next, incorporate exercise in any way that you can. Did you know that exercise is literally the best thing, the easiest thing, and the freest thing, I don't even know if that's a word, for your gut and for your diabetes. We have seen studies after studies showing that exercise can help change your gut microbiome, but also change your risk factor for diabetes and also can reverse diabetes as well. Diabetes is a condition which you can change by exercising. By doing that, you're able to reverse the damage going on inside your body. Next, manage your carbs. We know that carbohydrates can change your gut microbiome, can also change your risk factor for all the sugar and the risk factor for diabetes. Carb count. Manage your carbs. Get a dietitian to help because it's been shown in multiple studies to help out with, with diabetes and your GI tract. And then lastly, the most important thing you can do, actually manage your diabetes. Yes, I know it's crazy, but so many people want the easy things where you can take a probiotic or maybe drink some water. The most important thing, the biggest bang for your buck is to actually manage your diabetes whether it's insulin, whether it's oral therapy, whether it's the hard work of diet and exercise, these things actually matter. And it's probably the most important thing you can do today to manage your diabetes and actually manage your gut on top of that. So here's my call to action to you. If you're someone who is suffering from diabetes or even pre-diabetes, take the initiative today to make sure you can get your diabetes taken care of so it doesn't affect your GI tract. Whether it's talking to your healthcare provider, being on medications, or even doing something as simple as walking every single day, this is gonna hopefully manage and get your diabetes under control. Here's my question today for you. Do you have diabetes? Have you tried other tactics to help that out? 
what has worked, what hasn't worked. Comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel on newsletter where you can get great tips and tricks like you're watching in today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, let's talk about poop. Thanks, everyone.